And how are we doing today? It is Tuesday, September 18th, 2018, and we just finished another week of NFL action. So I figured we'll get right back into our NFL Pick'em, and now we are on the NFL Week 2 Pick'em results. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. As I, we already discussed, I was not able to predict the Thursday night football game, so at the very end of this, I'm going to give you my pick for the Jets and Browns game for this week, so that way I can actually count it in. The Cincinnati Bengals beat the uh, Baltimore Ravens 34-23 to to bring the Bengals to 2-0, and and the Ravens will go to 1-1, proving their Week 1 blowout was more a fluke than anything indicative of their season. Let's go to the Sunday 1 p.m. games. I predicted that the Carolina Panthers... All right, the red shows what I predicted um, when it's the whole thing highlighted, and then when it's after like the 26 to 24 with the 1 and 0 and 0 and 1, you'll see the real what actually happened. It'll be 24 to 31 is the actual score of the game, and you'll see I have the actual score highlighted and my prediction highlighted. So you'll know if I got it right or wrong going forward. Last week I went 8 7 and 1. Let's hope I do a little bit better this week. Um, like I said, the Carolina Panthers ended up losing to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, the Atlanta Falcons won 31 to 24. They looked a lot better this week um, in scoring the ball within the red zone inside their own 20. Um, and it, you know they just looked a little bit better. They held back the Carolina Panthers late comeback. So we'll see how this division plays out going forward. A lot of one and one teams, except for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are two and zero. Los Angeles Chargers, as I predicted, beat the Buffalo Bills uh, 31 to 21. The Bills looked a lot better this week. Josh Allen didn't look horrible in his first NFL start. You know, it wasn't his first appearance, but um, he looked a lot better um, than Nathan Peterman did in Week One. And they, you know, they scored 21 points, and it was a fun little game. The Chargers, you know, they uh, didn't look so great like I thought they would against the uh, Bills, who looked really bad Week One. So that's a good sign. For the Bills, bad sign for the Chargers going forward. Um, the Minnesota Vikings um, tied with the Green Bay Packers at 29 apiece. I predicted the Vikings would have won the games 27-20. Um, to 20. So how ties work for me is I just add a it add to the end of the end of the record. Like last week, Cleveland and Pittsburgh tied, so I went 8-7-1. This week, I'll have another tie on there. So, yeah, this game was very good. Um, there was a couple of missed field goals by both kickers. That led to Carlson of the Vikings being cut, and now they have signed Dan Bailey, I believe. So we'll see how that goes going forward. Hopefully it will not lead to another tie next week. Let's see. The New Orleans Saints ended up beating the Cleveland Browns, as I predicted, 21-18. to And Zane Gonzalez, the, the, the dud in gate week one that could have actually beaten the Pittsburgh Steelers and had the Cleveland Browns at 1-0, sadly missed about eight points worth of kicks, and that would have made his team actually win this game quite handily and or would have tied the game at the end if he'd have been able to hit the field goal. So they ended up losing 21-18. Tough luck on the Browns, who are now 0-1-1 on the year, and the Saints are 1-1. Um, the Miami Dolphins uh, went to the New York Jets, and they ended up winning 20-12 to against what I predicted. Um, I don't know why I have the Jets listed at 2-0. They are officially 1-1. The Dolphins are now 2-0 and, and in first place of the AFC East since I don't know when was the last time someone other than New the New England Patriots. It's probably been almost 10 years since there was another team perching atop the AFC East after a few games. The Dolphins look good in their win over the Jets. The Jets regress certainly again after their performance against the Lions on Monday Night Football. So we'll see how the Jets look. Darnold looked more like a rookie, uncomfortable. So we'll see how this plays out and see how the Jets look going forward, as well as the Dolphins, who look like they might run the division, should the Patriots not improve their offensive woes. And then we had the Kansas City Chiefs going to the Pittsburgh Steelers and winning, as I predicted, 42-37. to That moves the Chiefs and their high-powered offense to 2-0, and and the Steelers, who are finding more and more woes, with Le'Veon Bell, um, you know, holding out, and now Antonio Brown saying to critics to trade me, and I'll prove I'm not a product of Big Ben. The locker room is in dismay, in disarray as well. Um, so they may need to figure something out in Pittsburgh going forward if they want to save their season. The Chiefs uh, look great on the other hand. Their offense high-powered again. Mahomes, six touchdowns to no interceptions. I think he only had like five incomplete passes for a 152.6 passer rating. Nearly perfect, 320 yards. He looked like a bona fide star of the league, and against a team like Pittsburgh, this is, was a good show-out game to have. Congrats to Patrick Mahomes. 
<clears throat> and so far this week, I've gone three, two, and one in my picks. Not so bad. Not so good. One p.m. games continued. We had the my upset pick of the week. The Philadelphia Eagles went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they ended up losing. 21 to 27. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are now 2 and 0 with one of the better quarterbacks in the league, Ryan Fitzpatrick, taking the league by storm and and by surprise because he's normally, you know, it's Fitzpatrick. He has weird ups and downs in the league and right now he's on and up. The team has pretty much announced that they are not going to bring Jameis back even once he's unsuspended. Should Fitzpatrick be playing at a higher level as he is? Um, and the Eagles, you know, they get Carson Wentz back this week, so that's big news. So watch for them to do a lot better than they have the previous two weeks. They fall to one and one, and the Buccaneers now are in first place of the NFC South at a two and zero record. Kind of surprising teams with how well and how potent that offense actually is. Let's go ahead and move on to the Houston Texans playing at the Tennessee Titans. And the Titans won 20 to 17, moving the Texans, who are kind of disappointing on offense this year to all the hype they had. That offensive line is really hampering what Deshaun Watson is able to do with his great receivers. They might need a running back. This team's in rough shape. Um, Deshaun Watson certainly is showing a sophomore slump signs. Not a good look so far. Hopefully the Texans can right the ship as they fall to 0-2, and, and, and they've struggled to score points this year. The Titans looked a lot better this week, but they still seem to be struggling on offense as well. Mariota seems to be still struggling within this offense. Hopefully he can turn it around because 20 points isn't that much, especially against a team like the Titans or the Texans who are struggling right now. They will go to 1-1. One and, one. and then, um, yeah, I got these last two games. For whatever reason, I, just, I predicted these completely ass backwards with the Titans winning and the Redskins winning or with the Colts winning. I'm just a Colts hater. I don't really like them, so I'm probably going to pick against them a lot. Anyway, um, the Col Washington Redskins hosted the Indian Indianapolis Colts and lost 9-21. to Both teams are now 1-1. One and one. The Redskins' offense fell flat, and Adrian Peterson did not look like the Adrian Peterson from last week, so watch that deterioration to fall off, and Alex Smith just looked boring. The Colts' offense looked like it was slowly waking up throughout the game as they put up 21 points. Um, Eric Ebron and Andrew Luck is a pretty good little hookup. Um, so let's see how that goes going forward. Hopefully the Colts stay shitty and they don't do much better than 8-8. Eight eight. The Redskins do better than this, I hope, because you know the, their division is not that great right now. And that brings my records, my week two pick em results to a, an abysmal right now, 4-4-1. Four, four and one. And that happens from time to time. You know, some of these games are surprising. I could very easily have been a lot better off this week. There are a lot of very close games. I could easily be sitting at 6-2-1 and one right now, but, you know, sometimes a cookie crumbles funny. Sunday, 4 p.m. games. We have the Los Angeles Rams hosting the Arizona Cardinals, and this game almost went as good as I predicted. I even said this could possibly be a shutout, and I was off. I was only off by three points as they won 34 to nothing, moving the Cardinals to probably the worst team in football at 0-2 with no offense whatsoever. It's time to start Josh Rosen and get David Johnson the ball a lot more, possibly 30 times a game. And then the Los Angeles Rams just doing what they do, dominating on defense, dominating on offense. Their kickers hurt, so they have to sign someone as a immediate or intermediate kicker to uh, um, kind of aid the team going forward but they have an offense and a defense that can kind of support that until the kicker is ready to return so watch the rams going forward to a great year and this one was a heartbreaker for me as a lions fan because i predicted a close game and we got a close game as the san francisco 49ers hosted the detroit lions and they won 30 to 27 lions will fall to 0-2 and then they have to host the patriots so a tough break for the lions and the 49ers were gifted a late penalty on a I think it was pass interference or holding with the two guys shoving each other on a critical critical near pick six at the very end of the game that would have put the Lions at about the six yard line with the score of 27 to 30 and less than about a minute 30 on the clock if I'm not mistaken I'm a little shaky on the time so the 49ers were almost gifted a win as it seems to always happen with the Lions when the Lions play somebody they got shitted out of another potential just a good feel good win um you know but this that's the lions fault they shouldn't be playing in close games it shouldn't have taken the garrett blunt getting ejected for shoving a guy to fire this team up for them to wake up and score like 14 points in about four seconds so yeah hopefully that was enough to wake up the team for the entire season going forward 
we shall see what we have next week against New England. The first, you know, the whole season's been a test, so we'll see what we have actually next week. <sighs> and then we have the Denver Broncos hosting the Oakland Raiders and winning 20-19, to sending John Gruden, the mighty John Gruden's team, to 0-2. They looked bad. They couldn't get much done. Um, and then we have the Denver Broncos who snuck out a last minute win. Literally, I think they won on like a game winning field goal. One of the only people to actually kick a field goal and make it this week. Um, they moved to two and zero, and they're sitting pretty atop with the chiefs in that division. Um, that's going to be a fun matchup with the Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. And yeah, that was, this is what it was. I didn't really watch this game. I don't care for either of these teams. Go case Keenum. <sighs> This is a hard Sunday for me. Both my teams lost. The New England Patriots uh, went to Jacksonville Jaguars and played in a game that was 97 degrees, and the Jaguars took advantage and beat the Patriots, whose offense is fucking terrible, 31-20, to and moved to 2-0 and and potentially take the title of best team in the AFC away from the New England Patriots for now, as the Patriots fall to 1-1 and and look particularly pathetic on offense. They need Edelman back. Hopefully the Josh Gordon trade that they just got can revitalize this team to a small extent, just enough to get maybe Gronk a few more targets so they can't quadruple team him and take him out of the team entirely. Some of these other receivers need to step up. James White and Gronk can't do everything, so let's see what we have going forward. I did a lot better on these. I think I only got like this one pick wrong, so I went to 7-5-1 and one on um, this week. And now we have the Sunday and Monday night games coming up, so we're going to go ahead and jump to those. Fuck the Jaguars. We have Sunday night. Um, I forgot to highlight the winning teams. I predicted that the New York Giants were going to win, but they didn't, so I got that one wrong. As the Dallas Cowboys hosted the New York Giants, and the Giants will fall to an 0-2, reminiscent of their last season. It seems that their offensive problems have not been solved. They can't generate anything, even in the passing game. They might need receiving help. Um, their offensive line is terrible. So watch that be a problem going forward. And then the Dallas Cowboys finally were able to do something and muster up a win, even though their offense still seems weak with Dak Prescott. They don't have much receiving game. Ezekiel Elliott can't do everything. So 1-1 one one is their record. But I think at this point... The a NFC East is so open for grabs because the teams, the Eagles, are probably going to walk away with their division again. Unless one of these other teams, the Redskins, Giants, or Cowboys, step up. This is going to be the Eagles winning 12 games. Yeah, because this division's goddamn terrible. And then we have the Monday Night Football game. Most of you know what happened. The Chicago Bears, um, as I predicted, won 24-17. to and it was all defense all day from the Bears. The Chicago or the Seattle Seahawks were not able to get anything really going on offense. And the Bears just coasted on their defense. And Trubisky led the way as, as a game manager. That's all he really has to do as such a young quarterback with that level of defense. His services are getting first downs and getting the team to where they can either score three or seven points. It's not necessarily dependent on him. It's more so dependent on this defense to carry this team. And it's doing so early. Moving the Bears to 1-1, one and, one, and the uh, Seahawks are now 0-2. The Legion of Boom era is officially over. They are no longer the defensive super powerhouses of the past. They are officially Russell Wilson's 0-2 Seattle Seahawks. And those were all the games. So I went 8-6-1 this week. Pretty much the same result as last week. I would have picked the Bengals to win, but I don't get to add that. I would have had 9 wins. But if you add these all together, in my maths, you know, I, I'm an English major, so, you know, I may not be the greatest adder, but that puts me at 16, 13, and 2 on the season. The 2 is reminiscent of the, the two ties. Ties have no impact on my win or loss, and they just go away into the separate column. 16 and 13 isn't bad. I could do a lot better. Hopefully this week I'll do a lot better. I'll, you know, I'll feel it out. Now I have a general idea of what these teams are, what everyone can do. So, you know. Anyway, I'm going to use that expertise and gamble on the and gamble on the goddamn Browns again. No, I'm actually picking the Browns legitimately. As I said at the start, I'm going to give you my Thursday night prediction so it's recorded. Everyone knows I've made one, so I can officially say that I think the New York Jets, as they travel to the Browns, who are 0-1-1, the New York Jets are 1-1, I believe the Cleveland Browns will win this game very, um, not handily, 
But I think um, whoever the kicker is redeems that position in Cleveland and wins the game 20-17 to in a very close one. Um, the, it's going to be all defense from both sides of the ball. But give me the Browns. I'm feeling the Browns. I hate the Jets. So give me the Cleveland Browns for my Thursday night prediction. And that is the end of NFL Week 2 Pick'em Results. So we are 16-13. and 13. Thank you for listening and following along with the channel as it's growing. Um, please subscribe to the channel and like this video if, uh, you know, you're liking what I'm doing so far with the content. And, uh, you know, leave a comment how you're doing with your personal pickums. I'll have my players of the week and my results for the players of the week up a little bit later on. So be looking for that. And we'll be able to look for our, this week's players of the week. You know, the three options and the three options on defense and on offense. We'll figure it all out. I think Fitzpatrick won in week one. That's fairly obvious. We predicted that here. And I believe uh, we're going to go ahead and give the defensive player probably to Miller or Mac, I believe. Yeah, I think we went with Mac. So anyway, thanks for listening. Um, we will be live again on Wednesday playing a RuneScape stream where we will be on the road to 99 combats. Fun, fun. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.